Hey guys, welcome back to the farm in Marengo. I'm going back into the field here and I'll take you with me in a second. We're going to get some soil samples. I'm going to get about uh, uh, 10 or 15 actually different soil samples from about 15 different places inside the field. Then I'm going to get about an eight inch deep sample and I'm going to put it all in a bag and I'm going to come back and mix it in a bucket, get a nice mix, get a composite sample, and uh, send it off to the lab. I'm going to do the Haney test, which is going to give me more than just nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It's going to give me um, what nutrients are available, which ones are tied up, um, what the soil respiration is, kind of gives you an, an idea of the microbial activity of the soil and the fungal activity and just the, the, bio, the biology of the soil. I'm not expecting too much because this field has been farmed, um, I kept here, conventionally for over 50 years. Uh, been in corn and beans, corn and beans, mostly corn for the last 10 years. Uh, I think it was tobacco at one point, hay. So anyway, it's been farmed pretty hard um, using conventional <coughs> methods. And our goal here is to uh, restore and regenerate this land okay we're not here to get production out of it on day one we need to uh we're going to focus on regeneration conservation diversity is probably the best word to describe what we're after here and so and our cereal rye did come up uh, i haven't seen the rapeseed yet but i noticed i saw the rye came up we drilled that in uh at towards the end of october so it's coming up and so now we got roots in the ground and we will remain or continue to have roots in the ground for forever heretofore. That's the goal. And the reason I'm excited about talking about regeneration is because it's basically what I've been doing ever since I've started my practice 21 years ago. Talking about how you can regenerate your cells can regenerate depending on the environment they are immersed in. Or they can degenerate depending on the environment that they are immersed in. So let's immerse our cells. Let's immerse our nervous systems in a healing environment. And then you get the regenerative idea. If you're in a situation where you are dumping lots of chemicals into your body or chemicals into the soil, if you're putting in synthetic nutrients, like the synthetic nitrogen or synthetic nutrients from, you know, from chemistry that are that, if that's what's feeding you, you're looking towards degeneration. You get the point, all right? We are soil, we are dirt people. <laughs> not dirt people, we are soil people. What do, what are we made of? You know, dust to dust, right? We are the soil. You are soil. You're a soil being, right? It's, the, the, it's what you are. So let's pay attention to soil. That's all I'm saying, okay? Well, I'm gonna go out and see what kind of soil, we're gonna see what kind of organic matter is in it, and we're gonna find out all kinds of stuff, and I'm also gonna show you the rye and things like that. And thank you uh, for the soil probe. Hats off to, to Sean, who gave me the Oakfield apparatus to borrow to do my uh, soil test. So I'm looking forward to sharing those results with you as well. And then continuing to share you the results as we go forward, as we regenerate this land and you regenerate your bodies along the way. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, guys, we're heading into the field. It's my nephew, Zach. He's going to be my, be my pail holder. This 100-foot strip out here from the edge of the woods. Pan and Nathaniel's my cameraman. Uh, from the edge of the woods to the edge of the field is a 100-foot strip that is in, uh, in a government program to bring back northern bobwhite quail. It's planted in little blue stem, big blue stems, some prairie grasses. Um, there's like seven or eight different kinds of plants, diversity, lots of diverse plants planted in here. And, um, and actually it's supposed to be not mowed. It's supposed to be grown up like a prairie, 
but the the farmer that used to farm the field uh, uh, got permission to mow it uh, just to keep the Canadian thistle down but anyway uh, it will not be mowed anymore so you can see if you look down this alley come down here Nathaniel get in my line of sight it might be hard to see but you can kind of see the lines of green this line of green this line of green this line of green that is the cereal rye that we planted as a cover crop to get roots in the ground to start aerating the soil and, just, and it was the only thing that we could plant that late in the season because it germinates in really cold temperatures so good to see that it's coming up you can come down and get a close-up material of it's just an annual grass it's like rye and there it is it made it it made it up so i'm happy with that i haven't seen the rapeseed yet we put a couple of pounds of rapeseed in per acre and if it comes up it comes up but we'll see about that so i'm gonna start doing my samples so we're just gonna go about eight inches down crank it up pull it out and tap it in just tap it in happy gilmore says but as you can see the current state is basically compacted clay not much organic matter in there very brown that will change as we go along so i'm going to take 15 different samples from all over this 10 acre field so we're going to cover some ground so we'll be back you know i talked about diversity a second ago and that's a really important thing in nature nature hates sameness that's why when you have a monoculture crop all corn all beans nature is going to find a way to attack that that's why we have to come in and control that with either chemicals of course or we have to give it synthetic fertilizer nature abhors sameness same thing with you and your brain if you keep doing the same thing every day same way over and over same thing every day over and over your brain becomes basically dull that's why it's important to continue learning new things, new things. A diversity of things to learn means your brain stays happy. You keep making new dendrites, right? You keep making new dendrites and your brain stays fresh. And that's how you, the main reason you prevent Alzheimer's, but you also have to take care of the sugar thing. You got to get rid of sugar and the insulin problems, but that's a whole nother thing. Just exercising your brain and keep learning new things, learning new skills dive into regenerative living and regenerative agriculture. I have a cousin who's a medical doctor who just started taking a pilot lessons. He's gonna have his, you know, keep doing things outside the box and keep it fresh, okay? Deal. Yes. Okay, we have a grazing herbivore, right? A grazing herbivore pooping on the ground. That is what we want. That's one of the ways that soil is being regenerated is taking cows and getting them in small packs of, you know, called in intensive grazing. That's how people are regenerating soil, bringing microbes back into the soil, just like the buffalo uh, created, you know, how many feet of topsoil in the Great Plains from their you know, millions of them going in and eating, pooping, eating, pooping, getting predator pressure, moving along. And then guess what? They left that behind. New stuff pops up out of the poop. New stuff pops up out of the poop. New stuff pops up out of the poop. New microbes. Diversity. You are soil. I am soil. Daniel, the cameraman, is soil. Zach. Who are you? Soil. Being fed by the sun, being fed by your environment. Staying along with the diversity theme, we're done with the soil sample now. Uh, we got to get Nathaniel back to basketball practice. There's your diversity happening all over the place, and that's what I'm going to uh, go check right now. Speaking of, speaking of the posture, doctor chiropractor, look at there. There's your vertebra. There's a deer's vertebra. <laughs> Amazing. But that's what it takes. Uh, for an ecosystem to thrive is diversity. We've got bobcats up here. We've got, of course, lots of deer. 
Uh, not very many squirrels because there's bobcats. <laughs> not, I haven't seen many rabbits because there's bobcats. <laughs> but I'm gonna go put the chip back in the game camera down here and we'll take you by a couple of the springs as we go. So actually, the first one's right down here. This one's kind of close to the top of the hill. And we haven't tested the water yet. So I'm a little bit afraid of the amount of uh, uh, pesticides that might be in the water from the from the farming. But there has been a filter strip around it for a bunch of years, so hopefully that helps some. So this is our spring number one, as we call it. And it's a pretty good pusher. It's awesome. It's uh, it runs and it flows over a waterfall, which we'll see in a second. But you can see if I stir the water up a little bit, you get a little closer in there, Nathaniel. You can see that see that dirt moving in there. It's coming. It's pushing. So that'll be a good water source if if not for drinking. At least for possibly animals at the top of the hill. There's another base of the skull. Crazy. It's everywhere. On we go. Listen. I hear water. I hear water. That's going to feel really good when it's 95 degrees. Feels good anyway. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, this is getting ready to put my chip back in the camera here. This is the watering hole. This is there's three springs that feed the first spring and we're not, I don't, we didn't have time to go look at the other two springs that come out of the, the side of the, the hill there. Um, but they all come in and feed. This is the watering hole. Never goes dry, baby. Never goes dry. Battery life is good. Onward.